Happy Reformation Sunday. Today we look at the Reformation. It is also the first day of our um, stewardship uh, series, and we're going to talk about fearless living, which fits right in with the Reformation, and we'll see what that means for us. As you can see, we had a wedding yesterday. Uh, I'm sure you noticed all the rose petals in the parking lot. Our service begins with the brief order of the confession and forgiveness found on page three of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the sovereign over all the earth, the wisdom from on high, our merciful judge and savior. Amen. Let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you all the ways, known and unknown, that we reject and undermine your steadfast love. Though you made us your people, we treat strangers with suspicion. Though you forgave our debts, we collect without mercy. Yet we are quick to pass judgment on others. Have mercy on us, O God, and remember your promise to us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Through the living word, Jesus Christ, God forgives your every debt, your every sin, and gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Just leave the cross where it is. Peace time.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. you. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it in, on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know, all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. A reading from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's Reformation, and we're beginning our stewardship program and I have some mixed feelings about that because in reality the Reformation was caused by a failed stewardship program back in uh, Pope Leo X Uh, he was the Pope from 15 15, actually 1513 until 1521. And he, he, he was Pope during the Roman Catholic Church's biggest building campaign. <clears throat> In fact, when Leo first became Pope, Leo X, they, the Roman Catholic Church had a huge treasury except Pope Leo loved two things. He loved war. War is very expensive. He loved art, and he spent a lot of money on art. And he inherited a building program to rebuild St. Peter's Basilica. So they tore down the old basilica, and in order to get money now to pay for that basilica, They thought of, uh, they came up with all kinds of creative ideas, and indulgences was not new to the Roman Catholic Church, but a son of a banker by the name of Titzel, who was a a priest, went on a campaign with the with the blessing of the Pope to sell indulgences. And of course, the people who were most susceptible, the people who were his victims, were the poor and uneducated. So there's Martin Luther, who is a professor at Wittenberg University, and he is the pastor of the church, of the cathedral. And he can't stand the fact that poor people, his poor constituents, were going out and listening to Titzel and spending their, what little money they had to have this false sense of security that, oh, my time in purgatory is going to be shortened. So it's, it was that selling of indulgences that pushed Luther over the edge. It was really Titzel that pushed Luther over the edge. And he wrote his 95 theses or uh, 95 arguments against the Roman Catholic Church. Number 53 said that uh, the Pope had no authority whatsoever to grant, on God's behalf, to grant pardons for money, for financial gain. It seems ever since then, Lutherans have been really sort of uncomfortable talking about money. Wouldn't you agree? We don't talk about it 
very much. We pass the offering plate, and that even offends some of us. <laughs> right? Well, I'm not going to even talk about money today. That'll be another day. Today we're going to talk about living fearlessly. And I believe the Reformation has something to say about that. Those words from Jesus, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. There is something about we humans that make us want to be slaves. Slaves to something. Something other than Almighty God. If you remember back in Exodus 32, we had a, uh, an incident where Moses, he had already given the people in Exodus 20, verbally, he had given them the Ten Commandments. And now he was going up to Mount Sinai and he was going to bring down the commandments, this time etched in stone by Almighty God himself. And he's gone. The Bible says 40 days and 40 nights, and the people are becoming anxious. We, it, it almost seems he no sooner got up the mountain than the people turn to Aaron, gather around him, and say, Moses is gone. What are you going to do? And here are their exact words according to Scripture. Come make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So now he's gone. He's the one who understood God was going before them and leading them. He's no longer here, so make us a God. And, of course, he makes, we know the story, he casts a, a golden bull out of... Um, out of all the jewelry from all the people, and they immediately, Aaron turns to it and said, people of Israel, this is your God who took you out of the land of Egypt. Isn't it amazing how fast they turned? I was reminded of uh, that bull when I was in Peru last summer, because down in southern Peru in particular, on most every home, are two bulls. There's also a cross. There's also a ladder. There's a picture of it. Oh, this one doesn't have the ladder. And you see the pots. The pots, is, very often, they just put a bottle of wine or a bottle of champagne up there. Sometimes a bottle of Coke as a gift to Almighty God, a sacrifice to God. And the bulls are supposed to be a sign of strength and virility and fertility. My family is going to prosper. My crops are going to grow because I have those bulls. Interestingly enough, prior to the Spaniards, the symbol that they would put on their roofs or in their homes was the cougar, the mountain lion. And the Spaniards came in and said, mountain lion? No, no, you need to put a bull there because that's what Spaniards do. So they then now have the bull. We want something now to give us strength. It's like the baseball player that before every game put a cheese sandwich in his back pocket, not for lunch, for luck. We always want something. We're a fearful people. We put our trust and the wrong thing. Well, Martin Luther understood that the only way we were going to find certainty, Martin Luther understood two words, security and certainty. He said security refers to human safety and earthly guarantees. And he says there's a difference. We Lutherans understand through the truth of the gospel 
when we learn we can trust God, not fear God. We put our lives in God's hands. And then we have certainty. Only guarantees that God can give. And now Martin Luther understood his life lived with certainty. Nothing, nothing can separate me from what is most important, the love of God. We're going to sing as we close the service today. A mighty fortress is our God. And, and every wor- verse is packed with those words. And by the way, it's Martin Luther's paraphrase of Psalm 46, which we just sang, chanted. Every verse is filled with Martin Luther's certainty. As you read it, understand, uh, uh, see how he talks about the certainty he has in God. First verse, a mighty fortress is our God, a a sword and shield victorious. And I like the, um, the last verse where he says, were they to take our house, all those things that we put security in, our earthly security, were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wretched away, they cannot win the day. God's kingdom is ours forever. Martin Luther certainly knew as he lived his life in certainty. He certainly knew fearless living. Reminded of a story of, uh, that came from Uganda back in 1996. A, um, a young mother by the name of Angelina, Angelina Atyam. Angelina had, the rebels came and uh, like they do now, I, uh, they steal the young girls from families. And she and 26 other mothers had their daughters stolen. So they gathered at the local Roman Catholic Church to pray and talk about their loss. And one day a priest came to lead to lead uh, their prayer group and their, their worship. And he said, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. And when they came to the part that said, and forgive our sins, they all stopped and got up and left. They could not pray as we forgive others because all they could think of is how can we avenge this terrible loss, someone stealing our daughters? How can we avenge it? Well, the next week, they came back and they started talking about their inability to forgive. And finally, they said, we have to. They win if we cannot forgive. They understood that Reformation truth that Martin Luther understood. Were they to take our house goods on our child, they cannot win the day. So they learned to forgive. Seven years later, Angelina had her child returned to her. Seven years. Frederick Buechner says this, the love for equals is a human thing. A friend for friend, brother for brother, it is to love what is loving and lovely. The world smiles. The love for the less fortunate is a beautiful thing. The love for those who suffer, for those who are poor, the sick, the failures, the unloving, 
This is compassion, and it touches the heart of the world. The love for the more fortunate is a rare thing. To love those who succeed where we fail, to rejoice without envy with those who rejoice, the love of the poor for the rich, of the black man for the white man, the world is always bewildered by its saints. That's the love for those more fortunate. But then he goes on and says, and then there is the love for the enemy. Love for the one who does not love you but mocks, threatens, inflicts pain. The tortured's love for the torturer. This is God's love. It conquers the world. Well, that's what the gospel does for us. Our Reformation truth that nothing can separate us from God's love. How do we have access to God? Through grace, by faith. It's the very source of our fearless living. Jesus says, those that the Son has set free are free indeed. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the
with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray for the church and those in need and all of God's creation. God of grace, make us free to be the church of the world. Form our mission and ministry in ways that truly and tangibly give new life, hope, and grace in abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of grace, make us free to be one with your creation. Fill us with your spirit and lead us to find better ways to honor what you have given us. Help us to abandon wasteful habits. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of grace, make us free to be brothers and sisters. Shatter the distinctions that create hatred and fear. We pray for the peoples of West Africa threatened by the Ebola virus, and we give thanks that we have only been affected in a minor way. We pray for the people of Canada and Washington in the wake of terrible gun violence, and we continue to remember those for whom war is an ever-present reality. Send your peace. We give you thanks for the marriage of Lori and Randy yesterday, and we pray that you bless their union. We pray that you open our eyes to one another as people who bear the image and likeness of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of grace, make us free to be whole and healthy persons. Give respite to caregivers. Infuse medical workers with skill and inspire scientists to find cures. And send your healing to the sick, especially Teresa Baumgartner, Alton Burnell, Lyle Dolly, Zach Drake, Samir Godfrey, Grant Hayden, Eileen Kendall, Jim Lampy, Betty Lassant, Darlene McLaughlin, Gina Rutan, Jim Runyon, David Seward, Mary Thomas, Janice Trotter, David Ugla, Ramona Vaughn and Pastor Sam Waterman. Are there any others? Make us free to be still and know you, God of grace. Join our voices with the saints, especially Philip Nicolai, Johann Hermann, Paul Gerhardt, and the men and women of the Reformation who now sing in one heavenly choir. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Homer Melgren and of Ted Pridholm. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Trusting in your mercy and goodness, we bring before you these prayers and whatever else you see that we need in the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I'm going to ask Mark Heron to come forward and give a brief temple talk. I wanted to talk to you for a couple minutes as representative of the stewardship committee about how we're going to talk about joyful giving to the mission of the church. Over the next five weeks, Pastor will be talking about fearless generosity. The theme for today has been fearless living. Next week will be fearless service. The ninth will be fearless giving. And then we will begin back-to-back -back commitment Sundays with the topics being generosity, attitude and action, and appropriately for the weekend before Thanksgiving, thankfulness. Where I work, uh, there are times when there can be potentially dangerous conditions. Operators who make the batches count on the safety folks, the engineers, maintenance, management, and their own training to reduce the danger level so low that they can work with confidence. To be fearless does not necessarily mean to have no caution, but rather it is a confidence in your equipment, training, and your abilities to handle a task that lead to quality work. Much like Pastor's letter in the spirit, quote, quoting Terry Elton, a day-to-day -day and week-by-week -week commitment to new practices lead to those being second nature. 
We hope that this emphasis on stewardship will be an opportunity for you to examine the ministry of the church, how it gives adults and children day by day and week by week the knowledge, a critical eye to see the needs in the community, and generosity to be fearless in living, service, and giving. During this time, you'll receive several mailings with reminders about the purpose of this drive, leading to, with prayerful consideration, hopefully a pledge to Messiah. Thank you. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. <clears throat> Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated. <clears throat> 